What is up everyone, welcome back to another video, FPL Harry here and it is time to look ahead to my game week 7 transfer plans. What is up everyone, FPL Harry here and welcome back to another video, my weekly series where I take a first look at my transfer plans for the upcoming game week as a reaction to the game week that has just finished. I'm recording on Sunday morning, so a couple of games still to go to play, but we will talk about my team for next week and we'll review how this week has gone in a later video during the week. However, just a little bit of a spoiler, it's been a good one. I took a minus four this week, which normally at the beginning of the season is not a good thing to do. However, Ivan Tony was part of that minus four, hat trick, 17 points, what a turn in my season. Hopefully I can push on today a few extra points for my Brighton and my Arsenal players as well. But my game week seven team is lining up on screen as it is now. Before we get into it and all the detail, if we could try and hit 1,000 likes on this video, that would be massively, massively appreciated. In goal, we're lining up with Sanchez again. Bournemouth at home is a good fixture for him. Happy with how he's performed. Again, didn't get a clean sheet in game week five, but they're one of the best solid defensive teams so far this season. I think he's good value. He's going up in price as well, so happy that he's in my team. In defense, we have all home fixtures in here. Trent at home to Wolves. Again, I'm needing a bounce back for from these Liverpool players, they're disappointing week after week. We'll talk about Salah in just a minute, who I know a few of you will have captained as well. Did not perform well once again, a nil-nil draw with Everton, but Trent was taken off before the 60th minute, which means he doesn't even get his clean sheet points and ends up with a big fat zero from him. So not pleased with him. Next up is Jao Cancelo. Again, didn't get his clean sheet in game week six, but we saw what he did in game week five. The clean sheets are there. The attacking threat is there. Maybe he's not worth the necessary million over some of the centre-back or the 2 million over Carl Walker, although it does look like Carl Walker might have picked up a slight injury. I'm keeping an eye on Cancelo because I don't necessarily think he's worth the 7 million that I'm paying for him, but there aren't that many other options I could go with. Now, the final defensive slot is a bit of a debate at the moment. I've got Saliba in here at the moment who's got Everton at home, but I do also have Trippier on my bench who's away at West Ham. Now, West Ham did look good against Chelsea, although Chelsea did absolutely rob the result. I know as a Chelsea fan, I shouldn't say that, but we robbed that result, absolutely. Saliba does have that good fixture against Everton who are failing to score but Trippier does have a bit more of that attacking threat. At the moment I'm opting for Saliba they're both good options but I could actually have another defender in here as one of my transfers. In midfield Salah of course still plays Wolves at home he's going to have to bounce back at some point. The form he's showing although the FPL points have been there in a couple of the weeks the actual form he's showing if you watch him on the pitch is not good enough and the rest of his Liverpool team. The issue is there's no other real premium midfielder that I really want to go with. We'll talk about who I could sell him to a little bit later in the video. I am keeping an eye on him as well. Then we have double Arsenal attack. There's no chance these guys go anywhere. They're really consistent on really good form. Top of the Premier League as well. Jesus and Martinelli are both such good value in their own rights as well. Elsewhere midfield, Gross continues. Again, a good fixture against Bournemouth. Bournemouth did win in game week six against Nottingham Forest. A massive, massive result at the bottom of the table. What could be come the end of the season. But I do expect Brighton to continue on their good form, particularly away from home, and pick up three points here. And hopefully Gross can get back to his goal scoring ways. And then Harrison. Now Harrison is one I'm keeping my eye on. He got taken off at half time in game week six, which is a bit of a concern. However, it does sound like he just was a little bit tired. He wasn't given the intensity that he normally does. So Solly Marge decided to take him off and just rest him and bring him on a player who's maybe got that intensity and could give him in the second half what he really wanted to do. Now, they didn't perform very well in the second half. So I do expect Harrison to come back in. But if he is picking up a knock, if he is still carrying a bit of tiredness, I will have to keep an eye on him going into game week seven but he is having a great fix that Nottingham Forest team are not defending well at the moment even with all their new signings then up front Haaland does have Tottenham at home it's an okay fixture Tottenham have been defending well but Haaland is scoring in practically every single game he is playing in the difficulty comes this week is who to captain could we just leave it on Haaland again because he's scoring against every single team he plays against but it is a difficult fixture is there room to potentially captain someone else now a player that I wish I had captain this week is Ivan Tony of Brentford my transfer in this week scoring a hat trick scoring 17 points at home to Leeds has Southampton away in game week seven a good fixture probably not one that I'm going to go and captain in terms of my team the players that I'm not that happy with Harrison is one we're definitely keeping an eye on if he's fit we're looking at Mohamed Salah again not performing well and then the other one is probably Saliba the Arsenal fixtures are taking a turn for the worse so those three players are the ones I'm considering transferring out one free transfer 1.3 million in the bank let's get into those potential replacements 
So the first player that we're potentially transferring out is Saliba. Now, if you look at their fixtures, they are not nearly as good as they were at the beginning of the season. Everton this week, Brentford next week as well. And I don't really see that many clean sheets for Arsenal on the horizon over the next six. Potentially Everton this week is the only one where I potentially want to hold him. Now, in terms of his replacements, before I started this game week, it was going to be Reese James, Saliba up to Reese James. I have the exact money in the bank to go and make that transfer. So it could definitely still happen now that Reese James fell down to six million before the game week started. However, I've got a keen eye now on Ben Chilwell of Chelsea. Cucurella owners, I would be worried. Ben Chilwell came in and showed exactly what he's capable of, exactly why he needs to be Chelsea's starting left wing back this season. Cucurella could still fill in that left centre back at times, but I think Chilwell has already shown in 60 minutes of football what he is capable of doing. 5.8 million as well, cheaper, maybe slightly less nailed than you're going to get with Reese James. So at the moment, maybe I still go Reese James, but I'm definitely keeping an eye on Chilwell. And the final one is Carl Walker, and this would be a double up on the Manchester City defence, which I still think is really, really viable. Again, the past couple of game weeks, the clean sheets have not been there. Yes, they kept one in game week five, but overall, it was the first couple of game weeks, then Nottingham Forest, and around that, the clean sheets have not been as easy for them. But Walker at such a cheap price, this has also be Ake, who has returned from injury. Again, I think Ake really helped solidify that Manchester City defence. With Champions League coming, though, there is going to be rotation around that defence, particularly Laporte isn't too far away. John Stones is back fit. Ake can play at fullback as well if they go for a more solid defence, which I'm why well, I'm happy with Cancelo, because he's about the only one in there that's nailed apart from Ruben Diaz. So Walker could come in if I want to double up on the defence. He did pick up a slight injury in game week six as well. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. But I'm really focusing on getting that Chelsea defender in. They play Fulham away this week. Then they play Liverpool. But after that, a really, really nice run of fixtures does start. Next up, I can't believe I might have to sell my Leeds midfielder again in Jack Harrison. I bought Rodrigo in, he played 32 minutes of football, then I had to sell him. Then I bought Harrison in and he played 45 minutes and now I might have to sell him again. The fixtures are really nice, which is why I've got Sinistera in here that I might just move straight away to another Leeds option. Three Leeds midfielders in three weeks was like such a waste of transfers. But Nottingham Forest in their next fixture is one definitely that I can look to target. I could also go with St. Maximin. He looks like he'll be back for game week seven. Keep an eye on the press conference any quotes like that but their fixtures are really nice they did seem to miss him in game week six as well their attacking output is not as good when he's not in the team I'd have to use a bit of my money in the bank though to get either of these options and the other option before you laugh is Leon Bailey at Aston Villa. Now, the reason I've gone and put him in there, he's fallen all the way down to 4.7 million because I could go for Harrison down to a 4.5 or 4.6 million in the likes of Josh De Silva or Kuyate, for example. But I may as well invest the 0.1 and go up to Leon Bailey, who's 4.7. The Aston Villa fixtures from this week are now really, really nice. He scored again against Manchester City in game week six, and he's likely to keep his place. And if he doesn't start coming off the bench, I prefer him to any of those 4.5 million midfielders. So, Yes, I could have a 4.5 in here, but it makes sense for me just to go and get Leon Bailey, given that he's fallen by 0.3 million from the start of the season. Given that I want to do the Saliba up to Reese James transfer at some point, I think if I do end up selling Jack Harrison, it will be to Leon Bailey. Again, he scored against Manchester City in game week six, so I expect him to start against Leicester in game week seven. So I could just start him in that fixture and then look at bringing Reese James in in the future. So actually, although it might look crazy given how much of a fraud he's been at the start of the season, I do like Leon Bailey as an option. And then the final one we've got is Mohamed Salah. 13 million feels an awful lot to be spending on him, given the amount of returns that he is giving. And if you look at the fixtures as well, Wolves at home in game week seven is not an easy fixture by any means. They are good defensively, although they're not scoring many goals, they are good defensively. The other home games they've got are Brighton in there, Manchester City and West Ham as well. Difficult fixtures for him, plus those away fixtures are not easy against Chelsea and Arsenal. I ask you, how many games in these run of six fixtures are you going to captain Mohamed Salah in? Given that we're all going to be wildcarding by about game week 12, 13 anyway, at the very latest because of the World Cup wildcard, you can buy Salah back for that nice fixture run that they go on from that West Ham game onwards if you really wanted to. But between now and then, if you're not going to captain him, how many times are we really going to need Mohamed Salah in our team? You could downgrade to Luis Diaz, for example, some of the other options we've got here, I am really considering it. Now, one of the big things really of why we're chancing on not selling Mo Salah is there's not really anyone else that's really exploding. If 
Son or De Bruyne were going absolutely crazy, then it would be a much easier decision. De Bruyne is in there. I'm not going to move to Son because his form is not good enough. De Bruyne looks good linking up with Haaland, but he's not really being explosive enough for me to put the risk of selling Mo Salah on. I could go a lot further down, and these are two players that have gone really under the radar in Madison and Bowen. Both really good options last season and haven't done that well, particularly at the start of the season. But both of them have an incredible run of fixtures starting this week. Bowen could easily come in and so could Madison in and around the 8 million price bracket. Again, they are the talisman for their team. And if those teams want to turn around the form that they've shown at the start of the season, both of them will have to start picking up some FPL returns and it would free up a lot of money. Now, I don't really look at my team and think, I really want to do a lot else with that money. But for example, I could go Salah down to Bowen and then upgrade Gross or Jack Harrison to Madison, for example, and get both of these in for their really nice run of fixtures with the money that I free up. I would be left with only one premium in Haaland who would have to be my captain every week, which I don't love. But I do think the flexibility of my squad could be really good if I do go and sell Mo Salah. It's unlikely to be this week. I'll keep him for the Wolves fixture. But after that, I'm definitely considering downgrading him and upgrading someone elsewhere to really help strengthen my 11 man starting 11. So this is my team for the upcoming game week. I think I'll probably be on Captain Haaland again. We'll have to wait and see. I'm currently planning one free transfer, which will be Saliba to Reese James. That Reese James transfer is one I've had penciled in. He looked really good against West Ham as well. Although they lost the clean sheet due to a few errors in that defence, I do think there's a good chance they go on a hot run of form and Reese James over Chilwell, just because I do think Cucurella will still get a few minutes. Although if I was a Cucurella owner, I would be a little bit concerned. Happy with how my team is lining up. Very pleased with how the minus for has gone so far in game week six if i don't see you before then good luck in game week seven there'll be plenty of videos plus a live stream going into the deadline thank you all so much for watching if you haven't already we're aiming for 1,000 likes on this video plus if you haven't subscribed already thank you all for 31,000 subscribers it is massively massively appreciated have a good week everyone i'll be back very soon thank you all for watching like and subscribe before you go and i'll be back again very soon